What's up everybody? I uh, just wanted to make a quick video again to go back over some of the stuff I talked about in the Zipgrades PD last week. Um, hope this is going to be more of your uh, introductory uh, kind of stuff, just logging in, setting up a test, setting up answer sheets, etc. Um, so first, things, first thing you're going to do, you're going to come to zipgrade.com. Um, simple URL to zipgrade.com and then you're going to have the option of logging in, new user. If you haven't set up your account yet, good idea to click on new user, get all set in. Once you are in, I'm going to just do a quick sign in and boom, you are on the landing page. So as soon as you log in, it's going to come up here. It's going to come up, the, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we don't really necessarily need. Um, and then over in the right hand corner in the top, you're going to see your redeem license code. Uh, if you haven't redeemed your free year yet, um, and by free, I mean, th shout out, thank you, Mr. Hollander for getting us uh, that year paid for. Um, from the district. So he, the code that he put on the piece of paper that it was in our mailbox would go right in here. Click redeem and you get unlimited scans for the year. If you're gonna stick with the free uh, account, it talks, it says about like 100 scans per month. Doesn't really help when we have like little quizzes or you know, um, like our quarterlies, you're gonna burn through that uh, 100 papers pretty, pretty quickly. Um, so once you go up here, you're going to see at the top, there's going to be your quizzes, classes, students, etc. answer sheets, my account, more. The classes and students, uh, tabs are going to be something that's a little bit more in depth that we can get into a separate video. Like I said, this is just going to be more of a intro, uh, how to set the, some of the basic stuff up and, and scan and so on and so forth. Um, where I want to start first is creating an answer sheet. Uh, the reason I'm going to start here is because especially, uh, you know, everyone's going to be doing their quarterly soon. So, you know, everyone's going to be working on uh, the same test. This is going to be easier to get started and drop your, you know, when it comes time to make your quiz on the, te on, uh, the website, you do need to put in an answer sheet uh, that you want to work off of. So I like to start with the answer sheet first. So when you click on answer sheets, comes up to this page and Zipgrade actually gives you three different uh, basic options, 20, 50, and 100. Um, down here, you'll see that there's you know the different formats. I always like to use the PDF. Um, and then if you need more or less or a specific number based on whatever test you're giving, you can come down to the bottom and you'll see the custom answer sheet wizard. From there, you can click on it and uh, you'll be able to make your answer sheet. Now, the cool thing is you can reuse the ones that you make. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I have ones from, you know, the past school year uh, and, you know, beginning of this year. So you'll be able to see all the ones that you uh, have from the past. The lower questions, uh, tests that you have. So, for example, I have a 10, a 15, and so on. That they will offer options to do as many as four per page, which I think is pretty cool. It's a great way to save some paper, especially because we're going to be printing out these on our own. Um, little, I think I've mentioned this before. What I like to do personally is I'll take the questions that I know we're going to do a lot of. So, an example, we'll have a 28 one coming up, maybe a 25. Uh, one that you know you're going to be doing a lot of, I personally like to go in and make like 200 of them. That way I know I can, you know, 300. I'll do two per page, run off a nice 150, just get a whole bunch of these forms in. That way I know I have like a backup amount in, in a pinch. So for example, uh, the uh, quarterly, the test we're giving soon is going to be 28 questions, so I need a new one. I'm gonna add 29 um, just so uh, I can also grade their writing piece on here. Shout out to Priya for coming up with that idea. Uh, I hadn't, I don't know why I hadn't thought about that, but I can then also grade, and I'll show you guys how to do that. So I click new answer sheet, and then I'll give it a name. So for example, 29 question form, click, It'll give you your option for header boxes. Um, instead of class, a lot of times I'll just put in class period that way, because you know kids always are gonna be like, what's the name of the test? Like, what do I write? What period? What's the date? What do I put here? I like to put this stuff in that way. It's, you know, I really only need their name, but the class period is uh, super helpful when it comes time to actually grading. So you remember, you know, just in case you don't remember, uh, 
you know, right now where kids are still moving classes and whatnot. So I like to put class period just so I have that nice little buffer. You're going to click next and you're going to get step three where it says key version and student ID. We don't really need the student ID section uh, because that's not something we have really set up right now. Uh, like I said, we can get to that later in another video, but I personally like to leave that one out. We're going to leave the key section, uh, the key version section in here because that's going to be something that I'll show you guys in a little while why we need that, especially if you'd rather scan your answer key in rather than sit on the website and put in each individual answer. Um, so I like to leave that and then I'll click next. From here, you'll be able to put in how many questions you'd like. I always go with the basic multiple choice. I don't need any of these other options. Click once. I'm gonna leave everything as is. You can adjust what labels you want. If you want A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, however, true, false, whichever you want, you can leave this. Um, you can put it in here and I'm just gonna leave the standard. Like I said, I'm gonna have it's 28 questions, 29 if I'm gonna count my writing piece. Uh, which I might find it just be a little bit easier grading on here. Click 29, add questions. Takes a hot second. It's going to load and come up and show you what it's going to essentially look like when you print it out. Now, if you look down here, it'll say maximum number per page. I can do two per page, which is nice because I can print out a whole lot more and still save a little bit of paper. Uh, here you can, you know, it shows all the different stuff. If you maybe put in the wrong amount, you go in and edit that later. Now, make sure that it looks all good and it looks the way you want it to, with number of questions, boxes, etc. Because um, you'll see in a second, I click publish. It says here, are you sure you want to publish? Once uh, published, no further changes can be made. So once you make it, it's final. Um, I'm going to click OK. And now I have that form. Uh, if there's any issues, I would then just have to make a whole brand new form. Um, if you accidentally made a mistake or whatever, you can always delete the form. Uh, go over on the right hand side, you'll see a little trash can. You can always delete the form. Um, you can also share the form. So that's super helpful, especially when making these uh, unit tests. Um, you know, the quarterlies and whatnot. I can share this with whoever is also giving the same test. So if I decide I want to uh, share the test form with everybody, I will go over here, click share, and it's gonna bring you to this website, this web page. What I'll then do is I will either screen grab or I will just copy and paste this link. You'll email this link out here, copy and paste that into the body of an email, send it out to whoever is going to be using it, they will then just either click on it or copy and paste that into their browser and they will be able to access the Google, um, I'm sorry, the Zipgrade sheet uh, that they can then use for their test. All right, so now that we've made the answer sheet, I'm gonna go back and make the quiz. So I'm gonna click here and now it's gonna click up at the top, quizzes. It's gonna bring you here, it says all quizzes. You can then archive, get rid of, delete, whatever, but I'm gonna make new quiz. So I'm just gonna call it quarterly number one. And now your next option is going to be um, what answer sheet? So like I said, it's gonna be the 29 question form. Here's where you would then be able to go and pick which one you want. Uh, so like I said, 29 question, click uh, I'm gonna put the date in later. I'm just gonna clear that out. I don't really need it right now. I can always change it. And then I don't need online open submission, don't need anything else. So I'm just gonna click save quiz. All right, well, never mind. I guess you do need a date. So I'm just gonna put, I don't know, next Friday. I'm just, pick, I'm just picking a date. Click save. And now this is gonna be your main page for this quiz. Once you start scanning everything, you'll this is where you will see all the, the submissions. This is where you're going to see all of your data, uh, et cetera. So once you're here, it's you're gonna see a name, answer sheet, bada, bada, bada. Scroll down, it's going to have your quiz statistics, your min, max, median, standard deviation, et cetera, how many scans you had, how many questions, possible points, et cetera. 
Uh, from there, you can download any of this um, and then take all of your you know, item analysis, etc. You can take all the data and be able to print that out or download it if you want. It will also stay here and then you'll be able to see your score distribution and all the stuff that you need. I personally like to use, it'll say graded papers. It'll show here along with the scores and everything. I'll use this and go along with Power School. That way I can just edit, uh, put their grades in immediately. Um, so from here, this is pretty much what, for the most part that you would need for the uh, physical website, the desktop website, I should say. If you want, you could edit the answer key here. And this is where you can go in and type in, you know, A, A, make sure it's uppercase, B, C, however. And this is, you can also change, once you put in your answer, you can also go over here and change how many points it's worth. So if you want to make it worth you know, five points a question, awesome. That's why you'll be able to do that and go all the way down to the bottom when you're done with the key and click uh, save. You can also have it set that it's multiple answers. So uh, let's say you're doing your um, Let's say you're doing your writing piece and it's gonna be out of a few different options. So I can do five, A, B, C, C. And then from here I can do all the different nope. I can do all the different scores. And that way if I bubble it in the essays out of five, I can put whatever I want and how it's going to all be set up. Uh, let's see, let's get rid of all this. Once you're done, you can click save key and everything is ready to go. And from here, we're gonna then move on to what we have on the phone. Okay, so let's take a look at ZipGrade from the phone's perspective. Once you've come in and you've logged in, it'll usually just drop you on the quizzes page. From here, uh, I always like to go to uh, the account button all the way on the bottom right and just click that sync. That way you know for a fact that your uh, ZipGrades app is going to communicate with the ZipGrades um, website. That way if you go to your desktop, everything that you do on your app will then go and show up on the, on the desktop. So for example, I already showed you guys how to make the test. Now I wanna show you how to do things like going on the phone or on your iPad, whatever device you're gonna use, scan your answer key, look at the point values, etc. cetera, uh, scan your papers, and then uh, even edit your answers. So quarterly number one, you're gonna go tap on it. You're gonna see edit key. Now, just gonna tap around here because that's what I did on the uh, computer. Underneath it says quarterly, you're going to see the button that says scan for key. Now, what's cool is once you do that, as you can see, I already have my answer sheet right here. Now, without trying to trigger everything, you'll see at the bottom, your scan sheet says key at the bottom. You're gonna bubble the first one, you're gonna bubble one of those in and then make sure you have everything bubbled out down here. Now, just as an example, I already have, you know, just the first four bubbled in to show you. I even wrote key at the top as an example. Now, as you can see, there's like the four things, the four little squares. It says align the four corner squares with the viewfinder. Once you assign, align that, that's exactly how you're gonna scan the tests also. You're gonna get those black dots here um, in those little squares. One thing I want to talk about really quickly is before we even do that, make sure that you and especially your students do not touch these black squares because if they do, uh, or if you do, the app will not be able to scan it and you're going to have to do everything by hand, which kind of defeats the purpose. So, all right, let's take a look at the answer key. We're going to come in. Boom. It's already going to pick that's how fast it works it's already going to come in pick up your four answers you're going to click down at the bottom left save new key if there is an issue with the scan you can always do the redo but i'm going to save the key so for example it says here point value for correct answer 
one attempted but incorrect zero you can go in and always edit that later on now you can go to each individual question remember how i said on the desktop you can change based on uh certain you know things you need for your specific test if i click on this little i i can go in here and put alternate answers i can put uh, point value so I can tap on that alternate answer and put different answers and point values much like I did that on the desktop app uh, desktop website and so once that's in you're all ready to go and then you can go and scan your papers so for example I'm just going to use the key again as my um, as my example paper so I'm going to click scan it's going to bring up my paper again, bring this up the camera app. I'm going to go in and boom, it shows now on here. You already can see it shows a hundred. It shows a four out of four. It shows what the what score the student received. Uh, if I want to click review, I can then go and see exactly what they got. Um, and so one of the cool things is that, like I said, so let's say I accidentally you know, because you can use blue, black ink, you can use pencil, whatever. If a student realizes they accidentally picked the wrong answer, what they can do is always cross out and always put in what they believe is the right answer. And you can go in and edit that. So I did that on the, as an example on this key again, I went and crossed out and went, uh oh, I meant to pick a different answer. Scan. Once everything equalizes, boom. Now it says multiple marks. So if I do see that, I'll hit review. If I go to the top right, uh, you'll see those three, uh, the three lines. You can tap on that and click edit answers. From there, I can realize, oh, my student meant to pick this answer. Um, and then it'll automatically recalculate. Since I already put in the key that is B, if I go in and put whatever option I want in there, if I want to honor the kid's choice, I can go in and tap and it will automatically recalculate the score uh, based on it. So if it turns out that they, you know, cross out the wrong answer and rebubbled in the right answer, it will automatically recalculate for you. So for example, tap, tap, go back, and it'll show exactly what question they got wrong. So if a student comes up to you and goes, hey, what did I get wrong? You can show them exactly because it takes a picture of their sheet. Now, if I go back and I want to, on the phone, take a look and see what it looks like, I can click uh, what their scores will, what I'll see. I can click review this third option here, review papers. From there, I'll see it'll just show what they wrote in. I'll be able to tap and see their score. You can also see their score on the right hand side here. So now that we're back on here, uh, we can click go back to uh, the website and we can click quizzes quarterly number one and now if you take a look it actually even shows all of the scans that i just did on my phone it'll automatically show up if you look over here it'll give you your little distribution obviously it's only two scans so it shows just that come down to the bottom it'll show you minimum score maximum score your average etc etc all the information you need even down here it will show you item analysis it'll show you answer um, it'll give you a bunch of other data and my personal favorite is that it even shows you what is like the alternate answer that people pick the most so you'll be able to see like on a question specific question oh maybe a student is picking or a bunch of students are picking a specific answer that way if you either want to do things like test corrections or go back and review some of that material you'll be able to uh, address any misconceptions and uh, any any issues that you notice with a specific uh, question on the test. Hopefully this was helpful. Again, please uh, reach out if you have any questions. Um, hope everyone enjoys using ZipGrades. It's one of my favorite tools to use, especially for tests. Um, makes it, it's for me it makes the little things uh, about giving multiple choice tests a lot easier. So hopefully y'all enjoy it as much as I do and enjoy the rest of your day.